Israel faces threats inside its borders and outside its border. Hamas in the Gaza Strip, the Palestinian Islamic Jihad in Gaza, various factions internally in Jerusalem, Judea, and Samaria, the border with Syria, and the border to the north with Lebanon. That's where Hezbollah is funded by Iran. It's the mission of the Israeli Defense Force, or IDF, to protect Israel. We went with the IDF to its sometimes very dangerous northern border. We're going to show you the Israeli anti-missile defense system known as the Iron Dome. You'll also see the Israeli built wall separating Lebanon from Israel. And you are going inside Hezbollah's terrorist tunnel built to allow terrorists to secretly enter Israel. I'm in northern Israel at a location I'm not identifying for security reasons. But behind me is the Iron Dome. That's Israel's defense system to missiles coming in from belligerent neighbors. You can see the rocket launchers inside the area. These, of course, are launched should missiles be sent from neighboring countries. And if you have any question about whether or not it's important that they have them and how often is that missiles come flying into this country, on Saturday night, there was a missile that came in from Syria, and it just gives you an, an idea of the magnitude of the danger that this country faces from its neighbors. The Iron Dome Air Defense Missile System was developed by Israel with support from the U.S. It has never been used to attack or retaliate. Recognized as the strongest air defense system in the world, it has three components, a radar that detects incoming rockets, a command and control system that determines the threat level, and an interceptor that seeks to destroy the incoming rocket before it strikes. According to Israeli officials, it is about 90% effective in stopping short-range rockets fired by Hezbollah terrorists next door in Lebanon or Hamas and Islamic Jihad terrorists in neighboring Gaza. As a deterrent to terrorists attempting to cross into Israel from the north, the Israel Defense Forces built a wall along their northern border. All right, so we're in Zarit, right? Yeah, okay. community of Zarit is right uh, behind us. We are on the blue line, on the border between Israel and Lebanon. That fence right there, that wall. Right. Okay, how long has it been there about? So it's been here for several months now. Uh, we're finishing up to put on the new barrier to, in order to protect the north. On the other side of that fence right. that we see, that is, that's Lebanon. That's right. So the blue line is right where the barrier is. So right across from it, north from where we're standing right now, so this is all Lebanon. All right, any controversy putting up that wall? What we need to do, whatever we need, we can, we can in order to protect the north. All right, now, you pointed over here, that's a watchtower, that's in Lebanon, that tall green Correct. watchtower, right? This is supposedly uh, LAF, the Lebanese Armed Forces, so this is their watch, uh, watchtower, but if you move, if you move to your right, so you can actually see a white uh, building or structure right. over there. So that is already that is already a, a building of uh, Hezbollah, and they're the ones who've erected that specific white uh, building. All right, and they are separate from the people who occupy the watchtower. Supposedly they are. Uh, so Hezbollah is the terror group. Uh, Lebanese Armed Forces, Lebanese Armed Forces. Supposedly, they're not collaborating together. They're but not working are together. they? But are they collaborating? So it depends when and why. So sometimes we see them, sometimes we don't. Um, but again, everything is so fluid on the other side. So that's uh, one of the greatest challenges that we have here. There's a watchtower, a white one, that's right. with, with a, a different flag. So the white tower is held by UNIFIL, the United Nations Interim Force, that overlooks the blue line and holds the mandate that was given to them by the security uh, uh, resolution of the Security Council of the UN. And they're the ones that have forces here and overlook the blue line and over, uh, over they, they hold what, the mandate that they do. Are, are there forces in Lebanon or are they in Israel? So UNIFIL is only on the Lebanese side. They hold the blue line from Lebanon and they're stated and stationed over there. Is there purpose to pre prevent in part or to watch in part any terrorists that might cross the, cross the border? So their, their job mainly is to overlook and to monitor the situation on the line. They're supposed to go and investigate all kinds of events that go on on the Lebanese side. Um, and they work very closely in conjunction with the Lebanese Armed Forces. How effective are they at monitoring it if we've got terrorists coming through tunnels? How effective is the United Nations? So I can't really relate to, uh, or I can't comment 
on the United Nations side. That is something that might be asked uh, uh, UNIFIL. We know that we will do on our side whatever it takes in order to protect this border, to protect this line, and to make sure that nobody tries to come in from Lebanon. When we, uh, when we discovered the tunnels, so we've alerted everybody. I mean, we've alerted UNIFIL as well. We've alerted the, uh, our uh, uh, counterparts as well. And so we did whatever we needed to do on the Israeli side to make sure that nobody's going to use those tunnels. And, you know, when, once we go out to the tunnel themselves, so you'll see uh, what we did and how we did it. In 2019, the IDF revealed a cross-border Hezbollah terror tunnel that was discovered running into Israeli territory from Lebanon. Six of these tunnels were discovered during what was called Operation Northern Shield. So the entrance was made by IDF. Right. This Wait, is all... Was it, was it, was it uh, blown out this way? Right. So we've, we've excavated the entrance to the tunnel because when we located the tunnel, it looked like the picture right over there. Let's go and take a better look. This whole area was excavated. This is not how they found it. IDF built this, built this around it, you know, built this for us. But here's how it looked. Here, here's how sneaky it was. This is how hidden it was, this tunnel. It wasn't like this big cement around. The IDF did this, but this is how, how disclosed it was from, from observation. All right, here we go. Please. All right, okay. so this entrance here was as IDF built. Is that right, Major? Correct. This, this is all IDF including the steps we're going down. Correct. How about the electricity? Was there electricity in this tunnel? So this electricity specifically is IDF. We've added this, uh -huh. but it goes all the way in to the tunnel and connects to the Hezbollah's infrastructure. Do they, did they have electricity oh, at all? Uh, and, yeah. And they, they had electricity, or did yeah. their own electricity? Yeah, they had their own electricity, their own uh, way to pump in air from outside into the tunnel itself. So this is pretty sophisticated. Very sophisticated. So they had to have some engineers do it. I mean, it wasn't Absolutely. Just, you know, all right, now at this line we're getting to where the grade is. Is that still the line we're walking over? That's still IDF? So once we cross this line, actually, this is all Hezbollah authenticated. So everything you see here from this point beyond is all Hezbollah, which means the staircase, the handrail, uh, the drilling itself, and even they left us a little present here behind is one of the drill bids that was That's used incredible. in order to drill into the stone itself. What does one mean? So this is the level that we're at. Okay. How it's many our, are, how many are it's there? our numbering. We're going to go all the way to the 40 meter marker. The tunnel itself is 80 meters. So the infrastructure they had is this, the what piping system. What's in that pipe? So right now air I mean, is what, coming. What, what did they provide? An air tube? Air. So this is how air comes in. We pump the air from the outside into the, yeah. into the <laughs> tunnel itself. But how'd they build these steps, I wonder? So just cement, I guess, you see the way that they're built, it's with just cement. Right. But the infrastructure itself, it's pretty good. I got to I gotta hand it to them, that's pretty good, isn't it? Pretty good. And there were six of these. Six of these all together. And this is Hezbollah, this is... This is all Hezbollah's oh. work. We're going to the 40-meter uh, marker, and I'll show you the, uh, the comms unit, the communications unit that they used in order to communicate, because if you see, we don't have cell reception here. So this is the comm system, because you can, you can... There's a phone, they have a phone. That's right, so they had a phone, and you know, electrical switches, um, more electrical switches, so this is to provide the electricity to the tunnel itself, but also a phone, so they can talk with each other, or if you're working on the top level, you can call your uh, we're, we're, I called the others, let them know. How, how The first tunnel was discovered, and then how soon after were two, three, four, five, and six discovered? So all at the same time. The element of surprise was essential, so that's why when we covered one, we uncovered them all at the same time. And was there any reaction from Hezbollah? Not till this day. Really? They act like nothing happened, like right. they didn't do this, like this is just an right. accident of nature. Right. <laughs> Absolutely. I mean, has, has the uh, LAF said anything? No one said a word. How about the UN? Uh, Nobody. They were still investigating, but at the end of the day, you know, again, we'll do whatever we need 
in order to protect it. That's what we have no, uncovered. I, I got that, but I mean, is anyone saying anything about this at all? Other, than, I know what the IDF is saying, and I, you know, and right. I know what I think looking at this. Right. But I'm thinking that certainly the UN or you know would have a thought on it. Certainly Hezbollah would have a thought on it, and LAF would have a thought on it, and someone might say something. So better ask them I on, guess on so. their on their response. Well, I'm hopping and puffing a little bit now, but nothing like I was about three minutes ago, having come out of that tunnel. Um, that tunnel is like nothing you've ever seen in your life. It is so steep and so deep, and there is no good reason for that tunnel to exist except to do something sinister. It goes from Israel, actually it starts in Lebanon, crosses the blue line and into Israel. And there's no reason for that tunnel to exist unless you want to sneak into this country. And it is such a sophisticated tunnel. It has electricity. It has phones. Um, it has a uh, it has a, a boring. They bored it out. This was done by very sophisticated engineers. This wasn't just someone coming along and digging something out. This was a long, huge project. It's actually sort of an engineering marvel the way they did it. But um, it is the steep turns. And um, believe me, there is using my wildest imagination. Like, why would somebody? Why would somebody bore a tunnel like this, this long, this deep, this steep, with all the sophisticated stuff inside, so that you can exist going through this long tunnel? I use my wildest imagination. I can't come up with any good reason. It's only, only, to do something bad, something sinister. So there were six of them. The Israelis found all six. Five have now been filled with cement. This last one is open so that you, you get a real idea uh, of what these tunnels are. And you know, I, I, you can read about them, but when you walk them, it, it, you know, it strikes home. And believe me, it goes so deep. I was huffing and puffing, um, but I wanted to see them, and it is something else.